Welcome to AudioMorphous.com. We're here with the internet. Finally at the Roxy, July 6th. We've been waiting on the show for a long time. Thanks for having us, guys. Thanks for your Last pleasure. day of the tour. Man, you guys got to be excited, huh? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, are you tired at all? I mean, again, I was telling Danny earlier, you guys look awesome for you know, just driving in. Well, thank you. <laughs> it was a compliment. Yeah. It's, it's it's nice. Nice. You guys be getting rest or what? No. No, not at all. Four hours max. Yeah, it's four hours max. That's a good night. We're lucky. That's That's 30 days. That's the whole tour of four hours. (laughs) Well, you know, the thing that we want to point out to uh, to the guys, uh, or to ask, is with Habitual Limitations, you guys are obviously touring for this album. Have you guys had a chance to play anything from some of the previous albums, or you've been basically sticking to the new albums? Uh, We're playing some new stuff, or some some old stuff, rather. it's mostly new, but we try to always have, you know, a few songs from all the previous records. So okay. try to have a nice, uh, nice mix of old yeah. and new. Now with the intricacies of each of you, I mean, you guys bring so much individually to the band and to the music, and we're so, we were just kind of sucked in by the fact that every one of you, I mean, from Joe, from you to Danny, to Dave, to Sasha, I mean, all of you guys bring an element that is front and center, but but not overwhelming how do you do that i mean when you write uh, the bass lines are so so heavy and crisp how do you guys bring all that together without one guy being more than another you know it's kind of, i mean it's kind of hard to describe such a you know a long running process something that's evolved over the years but one thing i can say is that we have a pretty democratic creative system and we also are all really comfortable with each other's creative mm-hmm. criticism so we all bring in Pieces, whether they're fully formed riffs or you know uh, chunks, whole chunks of songs, we'll present them to the boys and learn them, and then we'll all really be open to suggestions about possible changes or alterations, and sometimes little disagreements pop up, but in the end we humor each other. You know, with Danny, with you and, and with the drum lines, you know, they, again they're so complex. Um, is it, it how much of that is really just ad lib with you guys jamming, or is it? You really, how technical are you guys with that? It's, it's a little bit of both. I mean, yeah. One thing that we have that, that helps out is uh, just a little recorder. We record all of our rehearsals. Okay. Uh, these guys are kind of the leaders. Right. Um, and basically try different ideas and, you know, you know, thumbs up or thumbs down and just keep going over that. Right. Sasha will email the day's practice to all of us when he gets home so we have it, like, in the car to listen to and kind of think about fresh ideas before they slip away. Yeah, being able to step outside and just listen to it and analyze it helps a lot. I'll bet. Oh, yeah. just making decisions in the studio as well. Sometimes you think something sounds great and then you get to go back and listen to it and realize I have little problems with this or that and kind of tweak it and revise it until you get it just right. Well, you seem like perfectionist. Is that a, a, a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, obviously, it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, probably a little bit of both. Yeah. On stage, we're perfectionists. In life, maybe not so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty loose. <laughs> so, Sasha, you seem to have a, a pretty large role in this band. Tell me about that. No, not really. Yeah, it's just our goose. Our lucky goose. Yeah. No, go ahead, Sasha. <laughs> it's our good luck job. I mean, I think everybody has a pretty large yeah. role in the band. And you, you handled the tour? Maybe the tour manager kind of... It's uh, kind of the room. Yeah, I mean, I just sort of ended up assuming a lot of those yeah. kind of things that need to get handled, you know. So it kind of asses Dean and I out for doing that for you? Just, <laughs> don't, no need for that? Not on the payroll, right? Yeah. I understand. All right, well, I'll try. As soon as the money starts rolling in, we'll, we'll sort you guys out. Well, that's that's <laughs> what we're hoping for, right? <laughs> uh, guys, again, thank you for having us. Uh, is Tonight's show is the last one. You guys are going to get a break. And... The, the, the album Habitual Levitations is obviously fresh so what's what's your thought for rest and back to the studio so start writing just start writing huh? yeah we've got a couple of things in the works for the fall uh, as far as the tours go and whatnot nothing set in stone just yet but we're definitely not done touring for this album just yet no yeah, yeah. how long a break and then uh, when do you guys start up next it always just depends on what comes our way and what things. Yeah, we're trying to just exactly. get some things sorted out for uh, different tours, uh, both in North America and abroad. So, you know, we're kind of waiting to hear, you know, about the finalizing all of that. But in the meantime, like Danny said, we just start practicing and start writing again. Just like, we love playing music with each other, so we'll keep doing it until we get nice. sick of it. Well, I promise you, uh, when I say this, I mean it, man. It, it really shows uh, all of your dedication to it, how much you love the music and how individual you are with, again, with what you guys play and your style of music. It's so 
original to us and it, it really is completely sustainable. We can listen to it a lot over and over and over and over again and we do. And we really appreciate it. We're true fans of yours. Not we weren't just sent here on the blind to interview. We really sought you guys out to do this. And uh, we can't tell you how much we appreciate the work you put into it. And all the fans that, that listen to you and buy your records and, and your CDs and downloads, uh, they're true fans. I mean, you have to have a, a palette to, to appreciate the intricacies and the, and, the, and the cuts and moves of what you guys do. And we do, and it's appreciated. So Thanks, man. Yeah, uh, people either love us or hate us. I think there's not a lot of, like, in-between. Yeah. Uh, so that's a good thing. Well, we, we, uh, we were watching the interview with... Uh, Mike Ackerfeld with uh, Opeth, right? oh, yeah. and he said the same thing. Yeah, we're big Opeth fans. Us and, too. Uh, are you? Oh yeah, love them, man. Just can't get enough of them. But in a recent interview he did, uh, he said the same thing. That we're, you know, we can't, we can't win. We either, you know, we, we, we do a metal album like Damnation, where and, and people fucking want to throw rocks at us, yeah. and uh, and then we, we crank it up, and that would growl too much. So right. you know what he said? I don't care. We play music that we like. Exactly. And that's what it seems like you guys do. Yeah, and that's 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 what we dig. That has to be your foundation, or otherwise right. you're just going to spend your whole yeah. musical life trying to make other people happy, and you'll if, you'll if end up miserable else, in the process. If anything else is driving you other than the actual joy of the music you make, then you probably have the cart before the horse. Yeah. Well, this is uh, this is a good venue. Have you guys played this venue before? No. It the sounds the sound sounded great. I heard you guys a little bit in the sound check. It sounded good. It's going to be nice and loud. Uh, down where we were, so I can't wait for the show. Thank we're you looking, guys so much. Hey, you. it's a pleasure. Thank you guys. Oh, Thank you so much. Man. Thanks very much. Appreciate man. it, Josh. But thanks so much for taking the time for AudioMorpheus.com. We're out. I'll tell you what, man. I was absolutely blown away. Mm -hmm. um, number one, the sound quality, the technicality of everything, the way that these guys play together, solid, unbelievably good. Yeah. Um, you know, the one thing that I, I, that we really can't get across to you more is by going to these shows, you get to witness what we witness. And that's why we're always on you about getting out and going to a show, man, because you get to see how incredible these musicians are. And with Intronaut specifically, they were so tight and so well-rounded in everything they did. I mean, honestly, they could have shot that in and, and, and put that on a live record instantly. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know, I was just blown away. Uh, the venue was good. Um, the sound quality. I mean, literally, man, especially Joe's bass, mm -hmm. man, just just rattled my chest. It was just awesome. Yeah, yeah. Double bass from Danny, man. I mean... The hair on my legs was rocking. It yeah, was crazy. It was the, uh, the overall quality of the, the sound, but you know what? It's the guys on stage that we did it, and we got to give thanks, and we can gush and gush and gush, and we will if we were let to, <laughs> but the reality was we loved meeting the guys. They were fantastic. They were very open with us Absolutely. in the interview, as I'm, sure, as I'm sure you saw, but more importantly um, was how gracious they were on stage to the to the fans. Yeah, absolutely. They played to us uh, probably, well, I don't know how many were, and I'm not even going to venture a guess, but they played to us just like they would a hundred thousand uh, seat stadium. Oh yeah, absolutely. They, I felt like they, I was right there. Um, you know, just they gave it their all. And they did. I'll tell you what, the live show. There's so many things that you cannot understand on a recording. The recordings are fantastic, but the live show is something that we really push for because it's really quite the experience. And um, it's such a great overall feeling when you're there, you're with other fans, people are, are clapping and uh, yelling, they're singing to the songs, and it's such a great vibe in the room. So, And as you, could, you, know, as you also saw from the video, we were, we were one row, uh, uh, one person back from the stage. I mean, um, the guys, once again, were, it was such a good intimate venue that that's kind of the killer thing about going to these as opposed to the big venues. And Intronaut has played all over the world and big giant venues, they, they've opened for Tool, um, they've obviously played the big shows, and they didn't shortcut anything. They played to us like uh, they would a big giant yeah, place, and absolutely. we really dug that. Absolutely. So big thanks out to uh, Intronaut as well as Century Media Records for putting us in contact. Uh, Sasha for uh, also obviously being so gracious, he was, uh, he was um, wasn't given a heads up, but he, he welcomed us as well as the rest of the band, and we can't be more thankful. We 
look forward to seeing them back around on the tour. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, if you have a chance, you see them in town, no matter where you're at, uh, you see him or not come to town, go see him. Do yourself a favor and catch a great show. Yeah, and also go out and buy their album. Habitual Levitations is out now. It's fantastic, as well as all the albums prior to that. Please do them a favor. Go out and buy the albums and go see their shows. And until next time, I'm Taz. I'm Dino. And we're with Audio Morpheus. We'll see you at the show. See you. See you.